This is the Radio Shack Pro 2004 VHF UHF scanner. This was a this was a thrift store find. I got this thing for all of two dollars. I took it home and of course it wasn't working. I spent an enormous amount of time troubleshooting this thing. And in the process of troubleshooting it, I accidentally created a short circuit at one point and then the whole power supply went out. It was behaving as if there was a blown fuse, but you know, you look at the circuit here, there you can't find a fuse. There isn't you, there's no fuse visible. And when you look on a schematic, there's no fuse. I ohmed out the power cord and I found it was open between the two pins. Now this power cord leads directly into this transformer. And so I wondered if there couldn't be maybe a fuse hiding inside of this thing, even though it doesn't appear on the schematic. One very nice thing about this scanner is the service manual is available online and it in includes complete schematics. But right here is our power supply. There really isn't much to it. There's our step down transformer right there. And then there's a full wave rectifier. A couple little filter caps and out it goes 14 volts. That's all there is to it. Now, nowhere on this schematic do you see a fuse. But there is a fuse and we will see it when we disassemble this transformer. I think there's almost no chance you're going to find a direct replacement. I figured the only thing I could do is fix this one. And so I decided to take it out and take it apart and see if there was a fuse in there that we could replace. There is another way of powering this thing up. There's this alternate power input right here. It's marked DC 13.8. I just happen to have lying around a 14 volt power supply and the plug just happens to fit. And so I was able to run this using this alternate uh, power input. But I would like to get the uh, the internal power supply running. Now, normally there is a uh, a backup battery sitting right here, which uh, supplies voltage to the memory. Now, this is held in with just two little screws here and here, and you can then sort of move that out of the way. And then the power supply itself is held on with two screws here. And those go through a couple of nuts, you know, here and in here. Those nuts are seven millimeters each. Those nuts are kind of tight, so you probably want to hold them with a seven millimeter wrench. But very easy to remove. So those two nuts removed. Power supply is basically loose in your hand. Now these are the inputs. This is to the primary coil, the input, and this is the secondary after it's been stepped down to uh, 14 volts. I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over. Now the uh, power supply primary lines are spliced into the AC power line. It's the red one spliced into the black ones. But in addition, we've got this 1.8 mega ohm resistor connecting one of the AC lines to the chassis. It's uh, soldered to that little post right there. And we probably want to just get that off just to give us a little more room to work. It comes right off just like that. And this makes it easier to move our power supply around to work on it. I'm going to flip this back over again. Okay, now here's our main power transformer, our, our step-down transformer. It takes us from 115 input to uh, 14 volts output. Now, in order to open this thing up, we have to open up these little tabs here. That's holding this bottom on, so we, we have to bend these back and get those out of the way. And then we can disassemble the rest of the transformer and see what's inside. Now the secondary lines, these two blue lines here, they connect to the main board here and here. It might even be easier just to desolder those to get even better access to that. <clears throat> We've got the transformer 
unscrewed and detached from the chassis and I've uh, unsoldered the uh, wires from the secondary coil give us a little room to work and we've moved the backup battery out of the way it's all held together with these 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 metal tabs that are bent over you have to just pry something underneath them and bend them back and once you've done that you can pry this bottom off now there's glue in here the stuff was all glued together when I first went through it and you sort of you have to sort of break that glue it might take some force now this has to be you know this outer covering here you have to kind of get a screwdriver in there and sort of pry it back and then hopefully we can slide this off the top like that and then we got these two coverings one on each side and those pop off revealing the transformer again there's glue you might have to pry these things off but now the transformer is exposed everything is wrapped up in this insulating tape which appears to be made out of mostly paper I started by cutting on the primary side I did not find a fuse and then I cut on the secondary side and there it is this is the fuse that we've been looking for right there that's our fuse and I did ohm it out and it is opened this fuse is from a company called UMI U -M -I, and it is 250 volts 1.5 amps and 115 degrees centigrade uh, it seems that this is both a current and a thermal fuse. So if it exceeds 1.5 amps or 115 degrees centigrade, this fuse will blow. I purchased replacements. Uh, this is a, a similar fuse. This is also made by UMI, and the values are the same. The shape is a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger. And it, the original fuse has this kind of a lenticular or lens shape. Uh, this new fuse has a very rectangular square shape. And hopefully that will fit in there. There really, there really isn't a lot of room. But hopefully we can fit this thing in and make it work. I have removed the uh, original fuse and I have teased out the wires from the primary coil and I have soldered them onto the leads of this fuse and I've checked the plug with an ohmmeter and I now have conduction between the two uh, prongs of the plug indicating that there is now conduction through the primary coil. Now this lead here I actually slid it all the way through underneath this uh, tape and underneath this part of the uh, the metal structure and I soldered it on to the wire lead on the other side way over here this is this is where the original solder was this is where the new solder is right there so I main I maintained this part of the leg of the original fuse the other leg on this side over here but I, I slid the extra metal underneath that tape there and those two should not be touching okay so now the new fuse is in place and I'm just going to use some good old electrical tape to try to make up for all of this see if I can't hold this together you know we need to tape it on both sides now okay now I've gone ahead and I've applied several layers of uh, electrical tape where all that previous paper tape was cut and I plugged the transformer into the AC and I measured the voltage off the secondary coils and we're now getting a about a 13 volt AC coming off of these. So it looks like we have a working transformer again. Now it's a matter of piecing everything back together. Put our little end caps on.
Looks like there's enough room for everything. Now we slide this piece, holding the end caps in place. And then the bottom piece. I've applied a vise here just to kind of squeeze the edges in a little bit. The last thing is we have to bend those four tabs over this metal plate. Okay, our transformer is reassembled and ready to reinsert. Put in those screws and those nuts. These nuts are seven millimeters. You have to sort of hold them with something in order to get that screw to turn. Now underneath, we've got this resistor bridging from one of the power lines to the chassis. There's a little post here that that resistor was connected to, sort of wrapped around it. And now we have to reconnect the uh, secondary coils to the main board. The terminals are here and here. Okay, the secondary coils are now reconnected. Now we've plugged the scanner back in. We'll turn it on and see how we did. Aha, uh -huh. yes, it is working once again. So if your scanner is acting like there's a blown fuse, well, there actually is a fuse. And it's hiding inside of the main power transformer. And it is possible to get into that thing and replace that fuse. An alternative to trying to solder in that new fuse is you could simply bypass the fuse. You could just solder in a, a wire across it and just bypass that fuse and then insert an external fuse. This might actually be a better answer because should you blow a fuse again, then you can simply you know, open up this fuse holder. You could, uh, you could solder this fuse in right, right here, you know, where the black wire coming from the outside is crimped to the red wires going into the transformer. If you, if you intersect this fuse holder, you could really achieve the same result. You could put your uh, 1.5 amp, 250 volt fuse inside of this. If I were to do this project again, that's probably what I would have done. This, this is probably actually a better answer, but either way, you could do it either way. So again, in summary, there is a fuse in this machine that does not appear in the schematic. It's hiding inside of the transformer. It's easy to test by simply ohming the, uh, the prongs on the power cord. And if the fuse is blown, you, you can purchase a nearly exact replacement and you can solder it in, or an alternative would be an external fuse holder. In either event, you would have to uh, remove this transformer and open it up. Not a real good design, but it is fixable with a little bit of work.